The year is 2019, and Modern Warfare's campaign opens with some environmentally conscious dudes carpooling into the big... Wait, wait, what's going on? Oh, oh no, oh no! Oh good, that doesn't happen for another day. 24 hours before that attack, we meet CIA Station Chief Kate Laswell, who's commanding a team in... Hey, I know that place. Tasked with infiltrating a Russian gas depot. Among them is our playable character, Echo31, AKA Alex. Him and his team sneak through the woods all stealthy-like. Hey, do you think they heard that? Jesus, we're four minutes in and we already have people burning? I thought for sure that'd be a hard get on my bingo card. They find the Russian gas inside, but before they can exfil with it, they're attacked by an unknown group wearing gas masks. And they seem like they didn't mean to kill the Americans. Um, oops, this is awkward. Laswell's pissed, but there's also these other military people who are equally pissed, but in a, in a slightly different way. I guess tensions with Russia are running a bit hot these days, which hasn't really been helped by them, um, lighting their gas depot on fire. So to prevent a war with Russia, Laswell has to reach outside of the bounds of the US military and enlist the help of the most badass soldier alive. Who gets killed by this British guy in a boonie hat, so they just hire him instead. This is Captain John Price, known as Bravo 6 around these parts. But before we get to learn about who he is and where he gets his mustache waxed, we're taken to Piccadilly Circus, as we're dropped into the shoes of Kyle Garrick, whose anti terror unit is hunting down a suspected terrorist cell in London. When it all goes awry and the terrorists go from suspect to, oh my god, they just blew up half the block. The whole city is under attack and even Garrick is nearly killed, but he's rescued by Captain Price and a team of men who we'd never hear from again. Price takes Garrick under his wing as the pair find a group of hostages, one of which has a bomb strapped to him. Thankfully, our hero Price knows just how to deal with a situation like this. Once the dust settles, Garrick tells Price that his team knew about the attack beforehand, but were caught up in some red tape and just couldn't act. Why have we got our hands tied? Let's just take the bloody gloves off and fight. Price, disturbed by this wicked analogy, asks Garrick to join him on his future adventures. Meanwhile, back in Urzikstan, a country that wasn't just made up for this game, you're actually really bad at geography, Alex, on orders from Laswell and Price, go to meet Farah Karim and her brother Hadir, two freedom fighters trying to stop the Russians, who are currently occupying their country, uh, from doing that. Alex says that while the US believes Alcatala, the organization behind the Piccadilly attacks, are also the ones who stole the Russian gas, the Russians are likely to blame them instead because they are racist. So they should help them get the gas back before they are the ones to suffer the consequences. As a sign of good faith, Alex helps the freedom fighters stage an attack on a few Russian commanders who are in town today. So they go undercover as just normal, ordinary people, going on a leisurely walk, watching the daily hangings, and getting into work as cinder block carriers. But secretly, they're in the shadows, killing Russians, planting C4 on helicopters and using homemade suppressors that I don't know enough about guns or cars to say if they'd actually work or not. They head back to base to assist Hadir in the second part of the operation, taking over a nearby Russian airbase. Armed with a clever combination of the Freedom Fighters RC planes and the CIA's AC-130, Alex, Farah, and Hadir take back the base for the people of Urzikstan, and Alex starts to earn the trust of Commander Kareem, sharing a cigarette with her and talking about life, their goals and aspirations, and that the gas kills all things. If you use these tactics, you are my enemy. No exceptions? None. Jesus. Chill, lady. Back in London, Price and Garrick receive intel on where they think that the leader of Alcatala may be hiding and break into the home of... Honestly, it's not really clear whose house it is, but it is crawling with terrorists. And as you snake your way through the levels, you get to choose who lives and who dies. Uh, at the end of the bloodbath, they find the location of the feared leader of Alcatala, a man named The Wolf. 
Good news is, he's hiding in a hospital right there in Urzikstan. Bad news, it's a fucking hospital, you can't just lay siege on the damn thing. So the next day, the US Marines lay siege on the damn thing, accompanied by Echo 3-1. They make it to the room that he's holed up in, and use a colonoscopy camera to see he's just running a little Twitch stream inside. But he was actually banned from Twitch in 2008 for saying the N-word, so they arrest him bringing him to the U.S. Embassy. But shortly after arriving, the Wolf's followers begin protesting outside the building, threatening to bust him out. And when Garrick and Price fly in to assist with the extract, they get shot down by those protesters and conveniently land on the roof without a scratch. What are the odds? The pair make it inside the Embassy and come face to face with the Butcher, the Wolf's right-hand man. And you have to watch him kill this innocent man and his son. They get to the safe room where Alex, Hadir, and Farah are keeping the wolf and prepare for extract. I hope you like 30 minute long tower defense missions because we're about to get two of them in a row. First, drop the wolf off in a safe room just outside the embassy and protect it from waves of Alcatala storming in only to notice that when your back was turned, somebody broke him out. Then, Alex and the Freedom Fighters post up on the only highway in or out of the city to see if he turns up. And while no wolf was found, Alcatala does make a surprise appearance and starts launching explosives from their t-shirt cannons out in the field. Thankfully, the Russians scrambled jets out to save us. Hooray! I knew the Russians would- wait, wait, why are you guys coming after us now? Oh god, I forgot they were racist! But Hadir has a plan, yelling at Alex that there's more weapons in the truck. Hey, wait, is that the Russian gas? Yes! And now we send it back to the Russians! As it turns out, Hadir was the one who stole the Russian gas back in Verdansk, and is now using it not only back on the Russians, uh, but also his own people. After carrying Alex and Farah to cover, he bails, knowing Farah isn't gonna be happy. Why isn't she gonna be happy? Well, I think it's about time for a flashback. 20 years ago, Kid Farah wakes up in a pile of rubble next to her dead mother. Jesus! Yeah, no, I forgot it was this kind of campaign. She reunites with her father and Hadir at their childhood home, but the Russians are invading and gassing them out of their village. As her dad tries to come up with a plan, this guy, who's easily the most evil dude in a game franchise with him, him, and the World War II mustache guy, busts into their house, kills their dad, and then starts hunting Farah down in what's honestly the best horror game I've played in years. Thankfully, Farah was a badass even in grade school, and gets the upper hand on Mr. Muscles. But just when it looks like she and Hadir can escape the village and are home free, General Barkov of the Russian military captures them. And bam, to be continued screen. Back in present day, the European Dream Team rescue Alex and Farah. Now, remember when Farah said, No exceptions? None. Yeah, she meant it, and is out for blood. So the crew add Hadir to their growing list of enemies. But first things first, they have to deal with the wolf. So they storm a stronghold where they believe he's hiding out. And after a cave-in separates them, Alex and Farah find themselves lost in an underground tunnel. Man, it sure is dark in here. Hey, can we light a candle or something? Oh god, never mind, never mind, I take it back. Miraculously, they actually are able to find the wolf in there and put one right between his eyes, but uh-oh, he has a bomb strapped to him. And this time Price isn't here to do his thing. So Alex and Farah need to clear their heads and defuse it. In three, two, one. So the wolf is dead. Time to celebrate. Uh, not quite. During a briefing with the CIA, Laswell breaks the news that Hadir has now met up with the Butcher. And this walking ad for toxic masculinity shows up to say because of this, Farah's people are now on the list. What list? Foreign terror organization list. Will you keep your muppets on a short string, Colonel? Or what? I'll fucking earn you from it. Alex has also had enough of the CIA's shit and says that he quits and is going back to Urzikstan to fight with Farah. Anyway, time to get back to that flashback. It's now been 10 more years and Farah and Hadir are in a Russian prison when General Barkov comes in asking for a Commander Karim, the supposed leader of a resistance that's forming among the prisoners. They waterboard her. They make her stand in a corner. They promise her maggot soup and then take it away. 
but she never breaks. Next up on the torture tree is a little bit of choking, but that's when Barkov is distracted by a manufactured distraction outside and Farah escapes to free a bunch more of her rebel friends and leading a pretty successful prison break. But unfortunately, the Russians knew about her grave weakness. Doors. Just when it looks like it's all over, boom! The SAS swoop in to save them. Hey, I recognize that guy. Back in the present, Price talks to Laswell, disappointed by the US's decision to call Farah a terrorist. Because, like, words hurt, y'all. And Laswell agrees, so the two conspire to carry out an off-the-books operation in Russia to track down the Butcher and, through him, get to Hadir, where they team up with Nikolai, an old comrade of Price, who's tired of Russia's shit, arms them. And then later, when they're chasing the Butcher down on foot, he hits him with his van. Dude, Nikolai is the best. The trio take Butcher to a warehouse for questioning, where... Who the fuck is this guy? He doesn't break though, so Garrick pulls out the big guns, holding Butcher's family at gunpoint. Now evidently, this child murdering, one shirt owning, probably not an actual Butcher piece of shit, actually likes his family and gives up Hadir. So Garrick disposes of him. That's two out of four bad guys down. Hell yeah, we're getting good at this. Price and Garrick infiltrate Barkov's estate, which is where Hadir has supposedly been hiding, with Barkov's family taken hostage inside. But when they find Hadir and try arresting him, he's adamant that they're all on the same side and shows them plans for a chemical weapons factory that Barkov has up and running. But before they can even react, Barkov's men attack the compound in a a helicopter and chase the trio into the sewers where they narrowly escape. Price meets up with Laswell, who has to break the news that Hadir is going to be used as a bargaining chip between the US and Russia. Price doesn't like it at all. And while he does give up Hadir, he holds on to the information about the chemical factory and heads to Urzikstan to see Farah. Whoa, 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 hey, I thought we were friends. What the hell happened? Price tells her about Hadir's plan to take down Barkov's factory, and more importantly, that he wants to do it now. After some convincing, Farah agrees to it, and the gang's back together again. They storm the factory, and after getting explosives from MVP Nikolai, they prepare to blow the place up. But uh-oh, a run-in with a juggernaut broke the detonator. Someone's gonna have to blow it up manually. I'll do it, says Farah, ready to lay her life on the line for her people and the cause that is so deeply personal to her. No, I'll do it, says Alex, the guy who just flew in a week ago. Say the word. Go. And with that, Alex runs off to go sacrifice himself. And while Price and Garrick finish laying the explosives, Farah sneaks on to Barkov's exfil chopper, creeping up behind him and takes him down, reveling in every stab, every gurgle, every third thing. And now, with the fourth and final bad guy taken care of, Farah can rest. Walking away as Alex sacrifices himself in a big, beautiful explosion inside the factory. The day's saved. We all did it. Now all that's left is for Price and Laswell to get some tea and discuss the Avengers and I mean, uh, putting together a task force known as One for One. Boom! Credits! For a game that isn't this one. Alright, that's it for the video. Thanks so much for watching. Here are our channel members. Those in the top tier uh, are, the, are the best ones. The ones under it are still pretty good. If you want to become a member, get videos like these early. It's $2.99 a month and you help support the channel. You also can put little emotes in the in comments. Look at all those people down there with cool emotes. You don't want any of their cool emotes? Uh, there's an F emote. You don't have an F key on your keyboard, do you? Shit, most people do.